Joe, when you look at the SEC's proposals here and how they are planning to overhaul the equity markets here, what works and what doesn't from your perspective here? Do you think that this auction mechanism, instead of payment for order flow like you're so used to doing, will be something that does actually improve the way that trades are handled? Thanks, Shanali. Thanks, Bloomberg, for having me on today. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good question, and it's a complex question. Uh, the SEC's put out a series of proposals, very involved, very intricate, uh, that deal with the, the uh, stock market plumbing. This is coming after the meme events, uh, when they said they wanted to take a look at equity market structure. And there's a lot that goes into these proposals. They're looking at things like quote increments and trade increments and best execution and disclosure requirements and this new auction requirement. And, and right now, retail investors have an unbelievably good experience in the U.S. markets. Orders are routed from uh, the, the retail firms to market makers. They get an unbelievably good experience, free executions, mm. enhanced liquidity, uh, and $3 billion of price improvement in last year alone. And I think the question that you asked is the right one, and everyone's looking at this new unproven auction idea and wondering, is this actually going to solve a problem but and make things better listen, for retail? Joe, I mean, to be clear here, you have a lot of business that works through payment for order flow. Is this something that would hurt your business at the end of the day? You know, some are saying that the SEC is really, at the end of the day, just attacking wholesaling. We, you know, we have a very large, broad market making business. We're the largest U.S. market maker. We trade virtually every asset class in every major country. We'll be fine. This is a a relatively small part of our business, but we care deeply about the retail trading experience in the U.S. and we want to make sure that any changes that go in make things move forward and not backward. You don't want to go to a world where we make these changes and then we end up reinstituting commissions or see other things that are bad for retail investors. Joe, let's put this into perspective for the retail traders specifically. When we're talking about the rise of retail traders as a part of the entire market, it's been a one-way trajectory since the back in the 90s. If you start to clamp down, and by you, I mean these rules, start to clamp down on that retail participation, to what extent is it going to hurt liquidity? Yeah, it's a, it's a great point, and I think that's one of the things that we've highlighted, and I think others will highlight. And it's one of the differentiations about the U.S. markets versus a lot of other global markets. The, the force of retail investing and the amount of liquidity in the U.S. markets is unparalleled from retail investors. It, it approaches 20 percent on some days of, of uh, volume in equities. It's over 20 percent of options volume on a daily basis. And it is one of the things that separates us from a lot of other markets. And I think that's part of why we all want to take care that we don't unintentionally harm that in the process of, of uh, trying to make stated improvements. So, Joe, you mentioned that you have a large business and you'll be fine, regardless of how things play out. But is there a possibility, depending on how things play out, that you would change your business model uh, as a result? I think that's right, and, and that's exactly what I meant by my statement. We, we will evolve with whatever market structure changes happen. We have a very, very robust on exchange market making business. It's the vast majority of our business. We care deeply about making sure that our public markets are strong and robust. And we have partnerships with all the global exchanges. So if volume shifts one way or the other, we're very good at uh, evolving with market structure change and, and evolving our, our business and model accordingly. So wherever the market goes, we will evolve with it and continue to perform the function that we perform. But again, the retail business in particular and the, and the uh, place that retail has in the U.S. markets is something that we think is is very important. It's something that mm -hmm. we care about and something we want to preserve. Joe, you were here at the height of the meme stock frenzy. You had kind of given a sense of how much the retail investor accounted for the market. It was about 25 percent of volumes at that time. How has that changed to now when it comes to both equities and options? Yeah, and, and uh, we were talking about this a little bit earlier. It's interesting because uh, we did start tracking this very closely around the meme events. And, and you know, retail around the zero commission time grew to low teen percentages. It jumped to well over 20 percent over the course of the pandemic. And it's, it's settled down now into the high teen range. But it's clearly a lot more of the market than it was before we got into the pandemic and meme stock events. Uh, and it's, it's a very strong force in the market. Options, I mentioned earlier, went through a similar 
growth phase and now has, has stayed in that uh, mid 20% range. So it's, uh, it is amazing to see. And, and that's why, you know, the, the market structure that services retail didn't happen accidentally. It was an intentional investment from firms like ours, literally billions of dollars over decades to bring things to where they are today. And it's part of why we want to make sure that everything that was invested in and built over the years doesn't get taken apart. Joe, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Some of the speculative bids, the IPOs, for example, the meme stocks that we saw really drive the market in 2021. Are those here to stay? What do you think? I mean, look, we've always seen periods of speculative excess, and I'm sure uh, we'll see another version of, of tulips at some point uh, down the line. Uh, but I don't think faulting the market structure is the right way to address those problems. A lot of where we've focused our comments and where we, we would like the commentary to go is making sure that we have identified problems that we're trying to fix and that we're not just proposing solutions because someone has a view of the way the market should look. We want to make sure that we're actually looking at what the problem is, what the suggested solution is, is that solution going to actually address this problem and not just, you know, willy-nilly kind of design uh, preferences that people have about what the market should look like or where it should trade.